given we have about over 30 million account BVN uh, uh, that has been linked to uh, accounts but how many bank accounts uh, are yet to be linked and just like how much uh, are we looking at that are uh, in the process of being forfeited across these banks I, I have mentioned that from central bank statistics 46 million accounts are yet to be linked to BVN after three years. Uh, I will not be able to tell you how much are in these accounts because I've not seen these accounts. I don't want to be speculative. I don't want to guess. I don't want to conjure. So I don't know how much. But uh, the central bank says 46 million uh, accounts. And I believe the central bank because the central bank is a regulator of commercial banks. Tell us, Mr. Obla, what is the magnitude of the kind of fraud that goes on with the non-linkage of these accounts to BVNs? I have mentioned to you that the Office of the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation, and I believe the Federal Minister of uh, uh, Finance, and also my, you know, I'm the chairman of the Special Presidential Panel for Invest for a special presidential panel for, uh, of investigation for recovery of public property. I tell you that every day we have requests for whistleblowers consigning accounts in commercial banks in the country that are supposedly fake. Some of these accounts are said to belong to agencies, extra ministerial departments, um, boards of the federal government of Nigeria and is to a certain extent state government and these accounts have not been operated these accounts uh, are there and uh, these accounts contain billions of naira so that is what informs the, 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 this decision by the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation that look it should go to court and uh, ask the court to make an interim order of official and then put the parties consigned on notice so that if they, if they own this account, they should come to court and tell us why they, were, uh, they have refused to link these accounts to BVN as directed by central banks three years ago. I'm very certain that some of the issues that you are perhaps also responding to uh, is uh, on, I've seen some of your response on, on social media. Uh, perhaps we should uh, put this to you uh, because you are uh, uh, part of government. On the issue of uh, the former uh, head of uh, the Pensions uh, Commission, uh, Mr. Menawu, is said to have been returned to office now. What is the explanation to that, and what can you tell us? Well, uh, let me make this point before I answer your question. Under the Money Laundering Act, if a customer fails to operate an account for five years, the bank is obligated to make a report to Central Bank of Nigeria to make a report to National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, to make a report to EFCC, or other regulatory authorities or judicial authorities. So if you follow that provision of the Money Laundering Act, so these banks are guilty of not making disclosure over millions of accounts that customers have not operated for the past five years. So your question, I do not know if a court of competent jurisdiction has found Mena guilty of any offense. If he has not been found guilty of any offense, I do not see why some people are outraged by his purported uh, reabsorption into the federal civil service. Uh, a federal civil service. Let me say that the president has no hand in the discipline of public servants. The discipline, promotion, and recruitment of federal public servants is the responsibility of a body created by the Constitution known as the
Federal Civil Service Commission. The Federal Civil Service Commission is vested with the power of recruitment, promotion, and discipline of civil servants. And the procedure under the public service rules is that if a civil servant is arraigned before a court over the commission of a criminal offense, the permanent secretary of the ministry that civil servant is working has to uh, evoke the relevant provisions of the federal public service rules, interdict that civil servant, and place him on suspension, on half pay, normally it's usually half pay, pending the hearing and determination of the criminal charge against that civil servant. If at the end of the hearing of that matter, the civil servant is found guilty, then there's uh, uh, a report has to be made to the Federal Civil Service Commission, and the disciplinary proceedings will be initiated against that civil servant, and then maybe they, they, they go further to dismiss that civil servant. And the dis disciplinary pro, uh, proceedings will be by the Federal Public Service Commission. It's not by the president. So they will go ahead, maybe set up a committee. They will, they, they will present uh, the judgment of the court. And then thereafter, they will dismiss or you know, advise the president to remove that civil service uh, from work. So it is not the responsibility of the, civil, of the president. So nobody should blame Mr. President. The I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not certain is if, if, if it, this is a blame on the president. The question I'm asking, yes. if you look at the profile mm -hmm. of the man in question here, Mr. Abu Rashid Mena, and this is a report that he was sacked from the civil service in 2013 and was in 2015 and reportedly placed on wanted list of the international police by the EFCC, and this is the same man who is said to have been returned to office by a letter dated that, October the 2nd he, he, and is re-entry into the civil service. Does that give you and perhaps the institution you work for a, a concern? No, 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 no. You are, you are wrong. You see, the premise which we are coming from is wrong. If, if the EFCC declared me wanted, that does not mean that I have been adjudged guilty. It is only a court of competent jurisdiction that can judge anybody guilty. So are you sure that there is a charge against this man? If there is a charge against this man, has that been brought to the notice or to the attention of the permanent secretary of the ministry this man was working before? Has it been brought to the attention of the Federal uh, Public Service Commission? Has this man been found guilty by a court of competent jurisdiction? It is not enough to say, oh, this man committed an offense or an allegation is made against him. Has he been found guilty by a court of law? I want, to, I want you to convince me that he has been found guilty by a court of law. If you show me any order of a, competent of, a court of competent jurisdictions showing that this man was found guilty of corruption or financial crimes or economic crimes, then you can come to that conclusion. We, we, we are just being speculative. We are These are not speculation. There this is, is no... a question that I'm, I'm putting uh, straight on to you. Um, but no, no, le no. let's for a moment leave that on one hand. The other issue is that the National mm. Assembly, uh, the, the lower chamber has asked, uh, a committee has asked that uh, the account of the former first lady uh, being frozen by the bank. Are you aware of that? Well, I, 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 I don't want to give credence to that because the National Assembly is not a court of law. The work of the National Assembly is to make law. The work of the National Assembly is to carry out oversight functions in the process of lawmaking to expose corruption, incompetency, and inefficiency. The National Assembly cannot sit as a court of law and begin to ask an executive department like EFCC to to, to, uh, to, uh, to not to, uh, you know, uh, frozen the accounts of somebody who is, who is under investigation. Under the EFCC Act, anybody who is under investigation, an order of interim for Fisher can be uh, uh, brought for, for, for attachment of his account. So there's something wrong with that. The National Assembly has no competence. If they stray into an area 
reserved by the constitution for the courts. So that, uh, that so-called order or directive is null and void. It's unconstitutional. They can't do that. And I am surprised that the National Assembly will want to usurp the powers of the of courts, court of law. They don't have those such powers. Their power principally is to make law.